Not me because they know we're friends. See, but the ratings People slip. miss you. People miss <laughs> <laughs> People miss you, darling girl. Well, I miss them too. I miss them more. I mean, the personal contact, apart from, you know... The, this is a pretty good, good show, though, isn't it? I love this show. <laughs> Watch out, Mike. Hey. <laughs> I remember the first time we ever got to have a chat. You know, you don't get much time doing television, coming on the midday show. It's in and out. But I recognised a kindred spirit. We'd talked for about one minute and we're on to cars and you were quoting horsepower of different cars. And so I said, what a lady. And not long after that, we got another chance to talk and it was boats. And I thought, it can't get any better. But of course it does because uh, you're also a great jazz lover. And mm. so, and uh, I, I mean, a musician to boot. And I was right the first time, a great lady. Ronnie, you've got a lot of memories, oh, haven't you? Great uh -huh. memories. I, apart from loving the girl, as everyone does, I, I had the great honour of um, opening and closing the midday show. And uh, apart from that, and being a party girl myself, we share a great passion shopping. And um, only the other day she said, um, you shouldn't ever be seen in that outfit in public. Well, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> but I love you, Kerry, and always will. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming in. And coming up after the break, the big surprise for Kerry Ann. But first, a few more mates. Hi, Kerry Ann. This is Dolly. I wanted to congratulate you on tonight. Now, I want to tell a story. I don't know if you remember this or not, but you were in Nashville and we were doing a show together. It was your show, and I was a guest on it. And I had my clothes on, and they were so tight, as usual, that uh, there was no room for the body pack microphone. And we were in a panic. We were about ready to go on. And I said, Carrie Ann, help me, help me. Where am I going to stick this? You said, you don't want me to actually lose my show by telling you where I think you should stick this. <laughs> anyway, uh, we got through it. We did the show, and we did not put it there. Hey, have a great night. Hi, Carrie Ann. This is Reba McIntyre. Congratulations on tonight. I know you're having a wonderful evening, and I feel honored and privileged to be a part of your life. You were one of the first people that I met down in Australia when I came down there to tour. And uh, I, I appreciate all the help that you've given me. And, but most of all, I appreciate the friendship. Hope we can be friends for a long, long time. See you next time when we come down to Australia and have a great night tonight. I, I just wanted you to know something. The time that we have known each other would belie the true friendship that we enjoy. No matter how rare true love True friendship is even more rare. I consider you that kind of friend, and I do love you. Congratulations. No one is more deserving. Welcome back as we pay tribute to Kerry Ann Kennelly. Kerry, in these days, you're still not working, but certainly busy enough as a company director and an author. As well, there's your extensive charity work with the Victor Chang Cardiac Research Unit, the Breast Cancer Foundation, and the Variety Club for Children. Now, you don't have any children, do you? No. Any regrets? It's a, another part of life. Yeah. But there is one child you helped raise as a teenager. Uh, he's your stepson, Simon, who sends this from New York. Hi Kerry, um, well as you know I'm in uh, the Big Apple which um, is a place you had a lot of fun some 20 years ago. I'm trying to do the same now. Um, I'd just like to say, you know, since I'm not going to be there, thank you for all the, the positive energy you've given me and the confidence you've given me in the past. Um, and I'd especially like to thank you for uh, all the times you um, unknowingly lent me your sports car because um, I think that helped me socially. Anyway Kerry, good luck with your new book. And, you know, I looked forward to seeing you next year during my wedding in July. Bye. Oh, nice. and, no, and no one can ever say you haven't been the best mum in the world to your four-legged children, mm -hmm. right? Over the years, there's been Angus, Joe Louis XIV, mm -hmm. Murphy, and of course, who can forget Bentley making that impression <laughs> on midday? <laughs> oh. 
How did you feel, Mother? He, oh, he not only did that once, twice, three times within five minutes. Your, your four-legged child at the moment is called Harvey. Harvester. Oh! Harvey. <laughs> And why uh, Harvey? It's such a cruel no, name. It's not a cruel name. No wonder Daddy gave you a bath today. <laughs> Jeffrey, you weren't insulted, were you? No, at least I'm house trained. <laughs> Honestly, Jeff, it was always meant to be a compliment. Let's <laughs> take it. Let's take it as one, actually. He, he has got your mischievous. <laughs> he more, has got your mischievous nature. Certainly more hair. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What's he doing now? <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's not going to, you know, repeat Bentley's behaviour. Kerry, as we've seen, you've got uh, mates all over the world, but none of them are as close as our next guest. Hey up, that buys come yet, lad? <laughs> all the way from London, ladies and gentlemen, Kerry Ann's best mate, Patricia Graham. <laughs> Have the pies come yet? Can you just fill us in on that I've one? Have pies come yet, lad? <laughs> <laughs> but, well, it was just a little thing that we had, wasn't it? When somebody would come in, it was just our thing between us on the telephone. S saved a fortune in phone bills, didn't we? <laughs> and that's just, it's just stayed. We must have been drunk when it ha when it shouldn't have. <laughs> yeah, it been, but it stayed with us for 22 years. Tell, tell us a story about saving money on the phone. Well, oh, what happened to us? <laughs> The day I met Carrie Ann, we'd, I'd just moved into the apartment. John had gone away and my boyfriend had gone away and we met outside the elevator. Well, before the elevator got down to the ground floor, we'd become good friends. It was like two minutes. Then on the way back up the elevator, we found that the phone worked. <laughs> and you see, it was a new building, so there were still boards around the inside of the elevator. There were only four tenants or something. <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> I said, the phone, she says, hang on a minute, she says, I'll go into the apartment, keep the doors open, and we'll see if it works. So she called the operator and she said, um, I'd like to make a charge call to Brisbane. Can you charge it to this number, please? <laughs> so I'm in the elevator, answered the phone. They said, would you accept the charge? She said, oh, yes. <laughs> so it worked. So we did this, like, poor oh, regular couple of times, three times a week. <laughs> and one day, Jimmy, our favourite doorman, came in, he goes, uh, you know the telephone in the elevator, girls? And we went, yeah. He goes, it's been disconnected. <laughs> he says, they got this phone bill for $5,000. <laughs> for England and Brisbane. And he goes, they have no idea whose it is. <laughs> there was only us two in the building. <laughs> How did John put up with you guys? We di he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> John gets very nervous when we're in the same country. <laughs> Don't even have to be in the same town, in the same country. That's why he likes me living in London and carry on here. I mean, we actually went out for pizza once and didn't come home for two days. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't tell John... We don't no. go <laughs> But so, how long are you here now for, Patricia? Oh, Maybe to we should Friday, warn you. darling. Oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John's gone away for a few days. <laughs> <laughs> Patricia, thanks very much for coming all oh, this way. I love you. I am so proud of you. And I didn't cry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Kerry Ann, you've been entertaining us all now for uh, a good 30 years. As bold as brass, and what you see is what you get. And you certainly took that advice your mum gave you all those years ago by not changing, and you haven't, which is, I think, one of the great reasons for your success. Now, if we ask nicely, would you mind taking us out 
tonight with your favourite song called... I take you out, all right. <laughs> <laughs> with your favourite song called That's Life. Would you? That's Life. I've got to say, the last time I literally sang or did that song was the last midday show. This could really finish off the career. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we? Just for you. Thank okay. you. Anne Kennelly's showbiz comeback with Prime Minister John Howard as straight man. Those stories shortly. First to Australia's... It's fair to say there's no one in show business quite like Kerry Ann Kennelly. For so long she'd been a daily fixture on our television screens. Well, today she returned to the airwaves and once again with a midday start. One more. There you go. Oh, that's a good boy. 
And this, of course, is very important news of the day.